right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner DRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Lance Tyson, who is in Columbus, Ohio. How are you doing, Lance? I'm great, John. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, that no, was fantastic. And Lance is uh, Lance is the CEO of the Tyson Group, a top sales training company, and he specializes in the area of sports selling. Uh, he's worked with some of the biggest sports teams in America, like the Dallas Cowboys, and he's the author of the book the Human Sales Factor, which is what we're going to talk about today. It's a number one bestseller on the Wall Street Journal. USA Today, Amazon. So th this is this is a book that's attracting some attention, and it's called the Human Sales Factor: Human to Human Equation for Connecting, Persuading, and Closing the Deal. And just before coming on, I was just saying to to Lance quickly is that this was happening before the pandemic. The pandemic has really accelerated it, where people really want to have good, solid authentic connections with other human beings, you know, whether it's in a sales process or any interaction but, you know, with business interaction. And, uh, and I think that's now been accelerated. And that's why I think your, your book is very timely. So uh, maybe just start Lance with the, the general book. Yeah, you know, um, it, it was kind of interesting. We, um, as we were kind of planning the book out, it, it was right before the pandemic. And really looking at it and we're, we, we kept going back to what really makes the difference and, and where does it come from? And, and there's so many cliches about selling, you know, most, a lot of people don't like the word sales. It's a bad five letter word. Then, you know, you constantly hear the cliche. It's all about the relationship and, you know, that's more of an outcome based item. But but then, you know, you talk, you, you go to, to Daniel Pink's book, The Sales Human, and you start looking at that and and you start thinking like with all this technology, you know, you were saying before what brought you to US was kind of that dot com and that dot com era. And I and just kind of thinking like, is, is it really about the relationship or or is is it technology? But if it is, why is there so many salespeople right now? And I think like you mm -hmm. said, people want that human factor. They want that believability. And, and we decided that the human is the factor in, in yes. especially a semi-complex, complex sale. You know, like I mentioned, like you mentioned earlier, we do a lot in, in the pro sports industry. It's not the only thing we do, but you would think sports just sells. Well, you're down mm -hmm. in San Diego, the San Diego Padres have a ton of salespeople. Does it sell by itself? Does winning just sell by itself? And, and, and no, it doesn't. It, it takes a person. It makes it more believable, more credible. People want an affinity with another human. Yeah, um, and just something that you just mentioned at the beginning there, because uh, which I always find fascinating. So you said, you know, sometimes people don't want to even admit they're in sales, right? You know, and some people say, oh no, no, we don't call them salespeople. We call them consultants or something like that. And I always go, yeah, that's fine. You can call them whatever you want. Uh, fact right. is fact is the prospect slash customer knows your salesperson so i don't know what you're gaining by that but uh you're much better to be exactly what you said is uh is to be more honest authentic and to embrace the sales part of your job because that's that's your job and it's a good job yeah. and it's helping people that you know that's ex that's exactly right i i think though when you when as you said that there's so many roles that require sales you know you watch shark tank how many times are, are those sharks they're not buying the product they're buying the person right in a mm -hmm. leadership role um you know you think that better.com um president that fired all those people online and just crushed you know the 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 brand value um there's all kinds of ways he could have sold that idea or handled that different. So his leader, we're always selling. If, if I got a movie script and I'm trying to get people to buy into it, I got to sell. And, it, and it's, it's I, I sell my kids on, on doing the right thing or not doing the right thing or, you, you know, or my example sells. So there's so many, there's so many, so much applicability to the word sales, right? And it's a part of what we do. It really, it's the lifeblood of any, of any business. So what do you mean in your book, book too, when the first chapter is selling from the inside out? I think that's a, that's a fascinating uh, title. So what, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So, so when I, um, 
one of my favorite books of all time was uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective, or yeah, Seven Habits of Highly Effective yeah. People. And Stephen Covey in the book says, like, look, personal development has become all about what's facing out. But before the like 1930s, when you look at Ben Franklin's autobiography or anything like that, it's really like, what is your value system? You know, and Ben Franklin's like integrity was his value system. It was an inside out, not an outside in, right? So um, first, when when you're, you know, if you like, if you go to Shark Tank as an example, yeah. there is a believability factor and an enthusiasm that an idea generates from. And like we say to entrepreneurs all the time, you're going to be hard pressed to find a salesperson as excited about your product or service as you are, because you have, yep. you know, you have that believability factor. And if you look at the word enthusiasm, right? Um, enthusiasm in Greek, I think means God from within and, or no gift of the gods. And in Latin, it's, it's God from within. Right. And, and the last four letters of enthusiasm, Ryan sold myself and, and, and you got to kind of look at your message and how it's going to come off. And it, and it comes from you first. Right. And that, and, yeah. and then through that, it, you know, you look at Aristotle, ethos, pathos, logos, and, and, and then you, you start looking at how you read people, but you got to make sure your message, right. So it's like that Greek mirror on the inside first, it starts with you and, and, and being believable, right. And, and structuring your message the right way and then delivering it. So it's not all, and most of the things I, I see in sales is more about like that out, you know, what you do yeah. outward facing first. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that. And and I think uh, it, what you said there about figuring out your own values on inside, it's, I don't think, I don't think people do that nowadays. I think if you asked a lot of people, like, what are your core values? They probably like, go, oh, hang on a second, I probably need to get back to you on that. Um, right. But I do believe if you don't know your values, if you don't have a purpose and all of that is, you're, you're not going to be able to project the kind of, of enthusiasm or authenticity or believability that you want. Agreed. Agreed. Or the confidence you need. And that, and, and, and in the book, we spent a lot of time looking at this. And when, when you think about it, um, and, and you, when you get that person that, you know, they decide that they're going to go off on their own, start their own business, they invent a product or service, they invent a technology that they, they get behind it. They're so clear on purpose about why yeah. they're going to do it. And like, if anybody in your audience, you know, ever watched Shark Tank, and I said it earlier, like, mm -hmm. I'm not buying your product or service. I'm buying, I'm investing in you because, because I yeah. believe in you. Right. Um, there was a guy on Shark Tank once, um, I think he was down in San Diego, actually. It, it was Tower Paddle Boards. He was the purveyor of Tower Paddle Boards, and I'm giving him a big endorsement here, right? And he just flubs his message up in the beginning because he kind of looked like he memorized his presentation. Yeah. But his when you watch the video on him, you can see it on YouTube, he, he has such a believability in what he, he does and a passion. He ended up getting a deal with those sharks and, and his message was clear, right? So it's that's the foundation. And I don't care really what you sell. You don't have yeah. to be an entrepreneur. I mean, you have to have that. You got to have that believability in your own brand, that purpose. And then that it comes through that that makes you effective or it makes the human the factor in that whole equation. Because It's really not B to B. It's not B to C. It's not business mm -hmm. to business. It's not business to consumer. It's human to human at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, no, totally. And and uh, as you said, I mean, it doesn't have to be high-end sales. Uh, I had recently, we had to get some HVAC heaters replaced and you know, a number of companies come in, but there was one company, the, the sales guy came in. My goodness, he loved heaters. He loved HVAC systems. He And he just like explained everything and he was really enthusiastic. And at the end of the day, you're kind of almost sorry to see him leave, you know, right. that was really <laughs> cool. I was really enjoying that conversation. Well, because there, there is, and that goes back to, to that enthusiasm, right? Enthusiasm is not cheerleading. It's an, it's an intensity. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's the transfer of emotion. My, uh, my accountant, his name is Tom Scheiman, and he's about as excitable as an accountant can get. <laughs> but, you know, Tom, Tom's very enthusiastic about what he does and why he does it. And it's on purpose. And, and you know what, you know, maybe something that comes out of that, and I talk a little bit in the book, it's, it's, it's almost like that the person's edge is selling or teaching, 
right? It, mm-hmm. It's like your H, HVAC guy, right? He probably ta- he probably liked to transfer mm-hmm. the the information because he because he knew it added value. Now, with that, sometimes salespeople talk too much, and there's all those sure. skill over explain it, and they tell instead of ask. But yeah. but it's hard to turn that off, and it and it is hard to teach too. I mean, it's not something yeah. that comes naturally for people. No, no, not at, not at all. I think, uh, unfortunately, you're correct. It, uh, and you would think, because people often think, oh, you know, if you're in sales, then this stuff must come naturally to you. But there isn't, there's no born salespeople. There is really wow. people. Uh, and of course you can. I mean, you're in the sales training business and you've been doing so for a long time. Uh, you can teach people in your book. I mean, there's a, there is a kind of scientific element to it as well. There is. No, there, you know, we... Um chances of, of, of an individual being good at everything in sales, in, in especially like if you focus on a semi-complex or complex sales process, to be good at everything from, you know, prospecting or finding a, a, a client. Because like, if you have to find somebody, that means you got to be really good at, at moving quick or qualifying with a swift level of interest all the way to mm-hmm. being able to deal with an objection or negotiating. The chance of you in between those things being good at everything it's slim to none, right? So there's going to be cornerstones that you look for. You know, is can you can you say things quickly? Can you say things of interest? Can you listen really well? You know, it's it's why um, I was talking to a group the other way. It's why people love like Chris Voss's book, right? Never spoil the difference. Mm-hmm. One of the things Chris does a wonderful job of is. He does a great job with like labeling things like, oh, it sounds like you're saying this or so what I hear you mm-hmm. saying is this. And and somebody says, what is it about that that makes it sound so good? Well, it's genuine, right? He's li- he's demonstrating the ability to listen to understand as opposed to listen to respond. There are core things like that that you really look for. You know, I, I, I've always said that some of the best salespeople I've ever recommended or hired into my own companies have been watching a server in a fairly busy restaurant because a really good one knows when to jump in and jump out of a conversation, yeah. not to dominate it. They know when to, how to suggest things without overselling it. They know how to interact with the minimum, but have impact. You know what I mean? And, and some of that stuff you can gain over a period of time. Some people do a little bit naturally, but that's stuff you really look for. Yeah. And, and exactly. Exactly what you were saying there about uh, for conversation, proper active listening and the validation piece, because there's nothing there's nothing more um, kind of uh, trust building than if if I'm talking to a salesperson and they validate, you know, the, what you were saying earlier, they said, like, here's what I heard you saying. I just want to make sure this is it. And that's hugely that's trust building because I'm thinking, OK, um, they really want to understand me because. Let's face it, have, we've all walked away from a, a, a sales interaction when we're on the buyer side, when we think it's fine, but then we're not sure. Did they did they really understand it? You know, that kind of, you just have that those doubts right. in your head. What you're talking about is removing those doubts immediately. There's no doubt, right? It's, it's so what I'm hearing you say, what I heard, so it sounds like this, and it's, it's like an interim summary almost, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, I, I think some of the best the best sales training I ever got. Somebody asked me recently, like, what, like, what training did you do? And I remember, you know, I was trying to figure out in college, um, you know, how I was going to pay for some things. And so I said, oh, you know what? I think I'll become an RA, right? Live in the, live in the dorms for free. And, and I just got to go through this class. And suddenly I realized that I might've been in over my head because, you know, they start teaching us like counseling 302, where you may have people, and this is like early 90s, right? You may have people on your four that have that have a you know bulimia or anorexia or might be struggling with home. And you know, my first instinct was no EQ at all. Like, oh, if they're having that issue, just tell them to grow up, not realizing yeah. that's probably not the best move. Now it was a very young <laughs> Lance Tyson at that point. And then as I started to get a little bit more EQ and a little bit more thinking through it a little bit and and then starting to realize that hey, if I was going to be able to do that, I actually had to kind of like people because I don't think you get away with that without liking people. It, it's hard yeah. to fake that or have it like I think Dale Carnegie said, show a genuine, genuine interest in other people and see if you're showing a genuine interest, that's hard to fake. Right. And, and mm-hmm. so there is that piece to it. And, and, you know, people call it emotional quotient. I actually talk about that in the book a little bit and it's, it's really hard to do 
but I know where you can start with, and I'm no expert at it. It starts with a genuine interest in other people or a genuine interest in their situation. Right. Yeah. Like I'm sure yeah. the I, I wanted to solve it. Well, right. absolutely. And I think that that curiosity, you, you have to have that curiosity, because as you said, you can't fake an interest. And especially nowadays, because we're so used to being distracted, is that if you're not really enthusiastic, if you're not really curious, if you're not really tuned in, it's going to show up very quickly, because I'm going to see you doing this, kind of, you know, glancing down at your phone or whatever. Uh, so Again, like you said, it's something that can't be faked. There's another chapter I just wanted to come to. You have presence and, and presentation. I want to talk a little bit about presence because people love to tell you about all the things they can't control, you know, the economy, the this, the that, the other. But the thing you can absolutely 100% con uh, control is how you show up. No, no doubt. You know, th there's something that, that I think leads into this. So it leads into the listening and presence. You had a guest on, I, maybe her name was Amber maybe four or five episodes ago. And she said something at the end, and I apologize if it wasn't Amber, but it, it was a really good interview right at the end. It was like at the two minute mark um, toward the end. She says, you know, I really don't like labeling groups of people. And I was like, amen, right? And I don't know if you remember that segment. And mm -hmm. and she, I think she was talking about millennials or, or something like that. And right, yeah, I was yeah. with a group of millennials this past week, millennial salespeople, some zeers and, and um, one of the things they do to that they've been taught because they there's everything's so distracting with you know whether it's a cell phone in their hand they're swiping on tinder they're on TikTok, whatever they're doing right um the the they there's an overemphasis with a lot of words like absolutely a hundred percent that's great awesome so they they were taught right because they're in a very distracted world to have overactive listening skills and then so I'll like interrupt him and go, so why is that great? Or why is that awesome? <laughs> right. Or I'll say, hey, I'll say, yeah, your price is real high. And they'll go, great, great. I understand. I said, so is the price being high? Great. And then they stop. <laughs> and I said, are you listening to understand? Or are you listening to respond? Or are you trying to demonstrate that you're listening? Right. Mm -hmm. Is anything really 100%? And then it kind of stops there. And and, it, and that presence and presentation goes back to to being there, be yeah. where your feet are, right? And connecting with that human. And so I think that that's the most important part, which number one goes back to the beginning. What I talked about in the book is like knowing where you're going with your message to mm -hmm. that genuine interest, which ultimately becomes a like, right? Or um, a, a way to win a friendship or a rapport, right? And and then and and then being where your feet are, right? And and I think that they all connect together. And it's a progressive move, right? It's 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 not it's not just something you it's not a tactic that you try. It's it's a strategy that goes all the way through. And it and it's it's kind of like meditating, right? It's yeah. I, I, I struggle with meditating because they're always like self awareness, kind of be there, be involved with your breathing, and then I'm you know, I don't have monkey mind. I have like double fist drunk monkey mind, like I'm, <laughs> I'm all over the place. But I think we do with that with people too, right? You, yeah. you know what I mean? We're, we're, and so, so that's why that active, that, that active listening, right? And being genuinely interested, that combo is, is really what works. And, it, and it's not, it's easily for me to, it's easy for me to state it. It's hard to do. It is hard to yeah. do. And it's and I think it's particularly hard now because we, as is, as a culture uh, now, we have you know as I said we have these things glued to our hands, and we're used to being distracted. We're always like we think we can multitask even though we really can't. Right. Um, exactly. And and the other part too is we don't sometimes know. Have you you've had this experience? I'm sure you're talking to somebody you know, and you're having the conversation and suddenly glance at their phone and then they're suddenly typing something and you're still having this conversation and your reaction is, well, that's rude. Right. Yeah. And, but some people that they're doing it so subconsciously that I think this is to your point, this is something you have to actually ask yourself, what am I like when I'm engaging with people? Do I put my phone away? Am I getting distracted? Am I having this tug of war between me and something that seems like a little bit more interesting over there? Well, you know, and, and I, I think it's, it's like, it's, it's the appearance first, 
right? I think, a, especially when we do a lot, when we do a lot of leadership work, it's the appearance of things, right? I, I had a, I, I had a senior executive in some training uh, at some consulting we were doing, and it was kind of open dialogue on some strategy. And at a break, I pulled him aside. I said, hey, are you here? And he said, what do you mean? I'm here, Lance. I go, no, no, are you here? I said, look, you're paying us a lot of money to be here. He goes, no, I'm sitting here. I go, yeah, but you're you're on your phone and you're doing this and that. And it is such a bad look for your people because you brought your people in here to green light think around this, to demonstrate to them. He goes, well, look, I, I paid a lot of money for you to be here and for us to have this conversation. I said, I get it, but it doesn't look that way. And he goes, I can repeat everything that was being said. I said, you may be able to, but that's not what the window dressing right. said. So you either, you either engage or not. Like you, you should maybe just, we'll come back and give you a report. And then he kind of was pissed off and he walked out of the room and he came back and he looked at me, he goes, you're right. And I appreciate you telling me, I go, well, but it was either that you can fire me too. I said, but, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a bad look. And, and you're not, you're not having the effect you, you need to have. Right. Yeah. So I think that's, that's such important. a great, yeah, that's such a, such a great point. And at the end of the day, I mean, this is what sometimes the people don't understand, especially nowadays where people are so used to like going on social media and ranting and raving at each other is you don't, you don't persuade people number one by shouting at them and telling them they're, they're stupid, but oh, wow. you, you persuade people by modeling behavior. That is the only thing that actually works. When I see somebody with good habits, who's successful, I'm going, Hmm, I need to figure out what they're doing. I need to re yes. you know, copy them. So it's all modeling behavior. It is, you know, you said it well, it's, you know, people learn by imitation, observation, repetition. And, and what a lot of leaders that, because the, the mission of Tyson Group, and I'm not here to sell Tyson Group, is, and it took us a while to get here. I'm kind of proud of this statement because we finally have arrived and figuring ourselves out. We work through sales leaders in their team to compete, to help them compete in the complex world. And, and that leadership piece is so critical because, what you just said, and, and we say this all the time, is your reputation is your repetition at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't, yeah. a lot of leaders don't realize yeah. that. Like, like you said, if I'm looking down at my phone and, and, you know, it's like the old adage, you know, you tell your kids to clean the room as they walk through your dirty garage. Right? <laughs> right? So it's, it's, it, it sticks. So, and it, and it's so important, so critical. But there, there has to be courage there too. Like if you're going to coach yeah. anybody, you have to have courage. It might not go as well as you want it to. Yet you have to have confidence to to say those things. But they have to believe you have your best, their best intentions in mind, right? So that means almost. I heard somebody say one time, "Be hearty in your approbation and lavish in your praise." You got to almost three x more give credit to our things if you're going to coach really hard. And give mm -hmm. people feedback to kind of break some of those patterns. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And to be honest, I mean, we're hardwired in a rather silly way, but we we need to spend a lot more time catching people doing things right. Uh, because, yeah, you know, we're yeah. great. We're great. I always give the example of of you know the the performance, the yearly performance review. Here, Lance, here's your yearly performance review. Here's the two things you're doing. You're doing well. And now here's the 54 things that you're not doing well that I want you to work on. Uh, no and in, yeah, instead of me going, here's the two things you're doing really well, let's let's see how we can focus more on those. Right, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, listen, Lance, this has been fantastic. All of Lance's yeah. information is going to be below this video. Um, but before we go, Lance, is there anything else you want to tell people about yourself and, and uh, your company? Yeah. I, well, first of all, I, I, John, I appreciate the opportunity to be on and, and I hope there was some value here. And, and you okay. know, if, if you're if you're looking at your team or yourself to get to the next level, I mean, obviously, I'd love for you to pick up my book. At the same time, we put a lot of great resources out there at TysonGroup.com or follow me on LinkedIn, Twitter. So there's a lot of good content out there that might kind of help you be more successful. So I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And just to remind everyone, the book is The Human Sales Factor, The Human to Human Equation for Connecting, Persuading and Closing the Deal. Just came out in February, so it's completely brand new, up to date. Absolutely. I'd encourage you because it's the human element is the one that's going to get us through. And to be honest, most uh, the perception out there today is that most products and services are commoditized and there's not that much difference. So you can make the difference by with the with the human equation.
So listen, um, thanks, thanks again, Lance. And uh, don't forget, uh, people, don't forget to subscribe. We also love if you can uh, add some comments and, of course, share all the wisdom that Lance has shared with us today with, with your colleagues and friends. So thank you for watching, listening. Thank you again, Lance. And I will see you all again really soon. Thank you. Thank you.